may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! everyone welcome back to the channel share subscribe like this video make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom look over the hair it's just doing this little thing when i first get up for some reason i don't know i can't contain it so you're just going to deal with me because i'm going to be kind of scary over the night uh, there were some reports come in we're going to talk about that a little bit now this was some uh, intel that came in late last night i thought about doing it late last night but i figured i'll just wait till the morning and we'll put it on. But it says the government of Iran has been deploying dozens of surface-to-air missiles, which we talked a little bit about that the other day. But this goes into a little bit more. There's more intelligence coming out about it. Now, these are SAM systems, and that's what Iraq and a lot of them other countries use back like even in Desert Storm. But the SAM systems, they uh, deployed tons of these SAM systems, more than what intelligence thought they should have uh, throughout the country ahead of the coming retaliation against Israel. Uh, while the video, there's a video, I can't play it for you, but it says uh, showing such SAM deployments like the video below is beginning to circulate on the Internet. Now, the convert, uh, com covert intelligence sources make clear that the sheer scope of all the SAM systems they put up uh, is quite large, larger than the U.S. expected, much larger. I mean, we're talking massive amounts of these systems that they put up. That's why they didn't act the day that they did. I do believe that they shot off some stuff and Israel took it down, and that's why it went cold. Well, they figured then that if they're going to do a massive barrage to get through the Iron Dome system, they're going to have to do a massive launch of either drones or uh, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and whatever Russia's given them. Now, I do believe Russia's given them a lot of weapons we don't know about. Israel does. I'm sure the Mossad knows exactly what they have. Now, Iran's moving this many SAM units in any uh, as many places around their country uh, as they are presently moving them in the case that they expect a very large counterstrike from Israel or perhaps even the United States. So... This is getting very interesting. Now, I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to tell you something. Now, I said, when, before this came out, I was talking, talking to Sister Shelley, and for some reason, the 10th popped in my head out, out of nowhere. It's like the Holy Spirit told me to watch the 10th. Now, I know we're watching Monday, but I, I don't know. It's just something about the 10 popped in my head. I'm not. It might not be nothing, but I'm just I'm putting it out there. It just popped in my head. It says, Israel has already begun moving their ballistic missiles and told the United States if Iran attack Israel, we will be compelled to respond. Let's see. Let me read that again. It says, Israel has already begun moving their ballistic missiles and have told the United States if Iran attacks Israel, we will be compelled to respond. That's, that's very interesting. That's quite a position for Israel to state. Let's see, that's quite a position for Israel to state giving in their attack against the embassy compound. Nevertheless, Iran recalls vividly the assurance given to the Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein when Iraq told Kuwait to stop side drilling and stealing Iraqi oil. This has come from Hal Turner, by the way. He's totally against the United States and Israel and everybody else. Kuwait promised to stop. They didn't. They had nothing to do with it. Iraq was trying to steal their oil. He's a total crazy person sometimes with some of the stuff. The Kuwait failed to stop. Saddam Hussein spoke with the U.S. Ambassador April uh, Gillespie, who told the United States had no problem with what Iraq might have to do. Thus, uh, Saddam Hussein and his troops entered Kuwait, which is garbage. It's not what happened. To Saddam's shock, the U.S. then shock. He, he knew it was coming. It was no shock. 
spearheaded a global effort to build troops in the Middle East. I don't know. It's definitely him wording this because it's horribly worded. The U.S. betrayed Saddam. Yeah, we betrayed Saddam. Okay, I'll get you. Fast forward to this week, Iran told the United States they had decided upon military response over Israel's attack on Iranian embassy compound. The U.S. reportedly told Iran that as long as U.S. facilities wasn't hit, the U.S. would not interfere. Trust me, U.S. does not want to help Israel. They're trying to turn them into a two states. The Iranians have been asking themselves, the only way they'd hit us is if they hit us here on in our country. That's the only way we would do a counterstrike against them. That's it. The Iranis, for some reason, it's like some of these channels, uh, even on YouTube, are like Iran's the good guy. And I haven't figured that out because they really kill their own people. But for some reason, I don't know if people just woke up dumb overnight. It's like people think Russia's a good guy. They're not a good guy. They kill their own people, too. These are, let me tell you something. I know our country is corrupt and it's bad. And it is. But there is no country like the United States. There is none. Here, you can actually go to Walmart and not have to worry about somebody doing something to you. Over there, it's really bad in these other countries. I had a friend that lived in Russia for a long time. Her name was Anna. And I corresponded with her for years. When her daddy died, they would not let him have a funeral because he wasn't military. So she had to literally, her and her family, bury him out in the backyard. They wouldn't help with the funeral. There's nothing like funeral, like we do now when you go to a funeral home and they have the casket. There's none of that in Russia. Nothing. It's a horrible place to live. It's not good. Just like everybody wants to go to China. China is not a good place to live either. These people, you're in slave labor. And people think the United States is bad. I'm telling you, go live in another country. It's not good. But these people here think that they've got it bad. Now, the United States is getting there. But luckily, God has protected this country. Now, he's not doing it no more. But he's protected us to the point of the rapture. At least he's protected us to this point and up to the rapture to where we can get out of here. It says the Iranians have been asking themselves if the, if the answer they just got from the U.S. is trustworthy. With this ugly, uh, ugly reality in mind, the Iranians are clearly not taking any chances of betrayal. Yeah, like you can trust the Iranians. Okay. Today, they began a very wide deployment of SAM systems nationwide. So they are planning to utterly massive attack, uh, a massive attack on Israel, which would probably be mostly Hezbollah doing this. Iran's cowards. So <clears throat> it, they're probably afraid that if they do fire off some missiles, that Israel will, will blow them to kingdom come because they can. Or they expect an utterly massive attack and they retaliate to perceive uh, the U.S. as the potential attacker. Either case, the clock is ticking towards a potentially disastrous war in the Middle East. This guy has no clue. Not a clue what is going on. Uh, we use a lot of his material because he has a lot of updated news. But when it comes to the Bible and everything, he has no other clue what planet he's on. He's on another universe. He has no clue what's happening, and Satan is running this whole show. And that's why all this is happening. He doesn't realize the king of all Jews is Jesus, and he protects Israel. And no matter what you try to do, I don't matter what Iran does, God will protect them. We already know they're here. We already know Iran loses because the Bible tells us so. See, if you read the Bible, it sure helps you, especially if you're doing news because you already know what the outcome is going to be. People might hate that and get mad, but the word of God is the only truth, the only truth in the world. And it talks about this last battle that we're talking about now with Iran. Iran has always been a thorn in Israel's side. The Bible says that. They used to be called the Persians. And this war between them will finally come to an end. God is going to end it. Because Israel's going to have three and, a year, three and a half years to sacrifice. They won't have Iran over their backs. That's going to be gone. Now, somewhere in there, there's going to be this Gog and Magog war. Now, me and Lisa Boyce are both agreeing. It looks like they're both trying to happen at the same time. Psalms 83 war and that war looks like they're about to come to pass. And like I said, once again, thank God we won't be here to see it. So I told you not to fear. It says in the Bible, 365 times, one time a year, one for every day of the year, not to fear. See, when, you, when you're when you sealed, you got the Holy Spirit in you, and you're you're ready to go, you're not worried about this job. It's our way out, like Lisa Boyce. That's why Lisa Boyce is always celebrating in her chair every time the news gets worse. That's why. And I am too. I'm not afraid of what's coming. I know what's coming. The Bible's already told us. And God's filled in a lot of blanks with what's happening with Ukraine and Russia. 
all these things are going to come to pass. That's why there's an X being marked over on the 8th of America. It's like, oh, it's just a solar eclipse. Oh, yeah, keep, keep, keep telling yourself that because that's not it. Judgment is coming. It ain't it, isn't it, is it coincidence that after all this time, America has supported Israel? But on the day that they quit, and that happened, what, less than 48 hours ago, this X will be formed over the United States on the 8th. God knows the end from the beginning. He knew that this was the week that we would betray Israel. He knew that. That's why that X is there. Letting us know he already knew. Hey, can I get a hallelujah? Amen. See, that's showing you. See, everybody else laughs at it and mocks at it. They're like, oh, it's just a solar eclipse and everything. They don't see what God's telling them. See, we get it. We're awake. We can understand. God showed us. He knew from the beginning. And that's why these solar eclipses happened at the exact week when we would betray Israel. The other day, when all this stuff happened in the UN going against Israel, and Iran making their threats, they got an earthquake. So did we. One on the East Coast and the West Coast, both 4.8s. Coincidence? People, you better wake up, because God's speaking, and he is speaking loud and clear that this is coming to an end. It really is. Jesus loves us all. We're all his children, no matter what color you are what background you are. You know, I get attacked here on this channel all the time. And all I try to do is make sure people don't get left behind. You know, that's all I do. I want people to be on that ark before we get out of here because I love you all. You're my family. Even the ones come against me, they're still my brothers and sisters. Bottom line, God made us all. Don't matter what we look like or what last name we have. We're still family. We've forgotten that a long time ago that we all are one family. The church has forgotten it many, many years ago, many centuries ago, actually, when we started dividing ourselves. Satan knew what he was doing by keeping us separated or causing us to gossip against each other or fight against us. None of us are perfect. Until we get rid of these old fleshly bodies, we're going to be dealing with this junk for a while. But the thing is, we don't have that much long, longer to deal with these old bodies when they'll be turn into a new glorified body. Now, there's some good videos out. Uh, Dr. Barry got him a good video out. If you don't have time or you have time, check his out. He did a great video there at uh, Dr. Barry All. And there's just a lot of good videos out right now. Now, Brother Martin did a good video. If you haven't subscribed to him, go over to Brother Martin. He does the Bible code. He's got, he's found some more stuff, so it's definitely interesting to watch him. Uh, Sister Gigi did one the other day. It wasn't very long. It's three minutes. We always love seeing Gigi at Blue Heaven. Uh, and Brother Bob, once again, he's just, you know, doing his thing there at uh, Dream, End Times Dream and Vision. We've got him also with the Uptime guys there that do a great job of letting you know all the news that's going on around the world. Right now, most of the watchmen and watch women around the world, and there's plenty of good ones out there, are letting everybody know that we have limited time, just like Brother Aaron does at God a Minute constantly. You know, Brother Aaron does a great job. You know, Sister Christy was telling me a story about him. I've always thought about it, that when Brother Aaron goes into a, a store, he will be going through a grocery store like me and you would, but he'll have the Bible in one hand. He's always studying, always wanting to know more. He's a great human being that loves God. And I, I'm very glad to say that we have some of the greatest watchmen and watchwomen I've ever met. I'm glad that I got into this community. There are so many good ones out there, just like Brother Tom there at uh, Watchman River. Every day they wake up and they get ready and they put their full body of armor on and try to encourage the body of Christ that's really having a hard time and struggling being here. A lot of us thought we'd already be gone. But these great women and men, these warriors out there, to come on here each and every day to try to get us through. And a lot of times we don't give them enough credit. These people do an awesome job and may God reward them for all the work that they do because they're very impressive and I'm glad I know all of them. Like Brother John at Watchman for that great day. These are people that each and every day, like the Kim Fishers and many others, they're always putting on their full body of armor 
and going out to encourage the body of Christ that we don't have much longer to be here. And that helps us get through another day, that we're one day closer. Even though we're seeing all these events and we see World War III and all these things coming up on us, along with this whatever happens on April the 8th, we've still got each other and we're one big family. And that's what's important in these last moments here on earth. We're all mess up. We all fall short. I fall short every day. Anything I've ever done that was good, God did it through me. Have I failed and fell and fell on my face many times? I do it all the time. I won't be on, I won't never get on here and tell you I'm a perfect human being because I'm not. I fall just like everybody else. I have the same issues that everybody else has. But the one thing I do have is I believe in what Jesus did for me what he did for me on that cross. And that's the only way I can get in because I know there's nothing I've ever done that could ever get me in. Jesus did it all. No matter what I do or how hard I've tried or try, I will always fail. I will always be a sinner. And that's why I need Jesus. When I come to that realization in my life, I quit worrying and I quit stressing like a lot of people do about their salvation. Because you, I started putting my trust in it, truly putting my trust in it, and just realized I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. And without what Jesus did, none of us would get home. So when you ever have to tell yourself that nobody loves you and that you're alone, you're never alone. God could have left me a long time ago, but he never did. He always stuck by my side, even though I'm a total, utter failure. And a lot of us feel that way a lot of times, and a lot of us do. We fail constantly. Paul did. Paul wrote about it many times, about how many he hated his flesh, that he battled with it each and every day up until the day he finally perished. And we all do the same thing. We are no different from Paul. There was only one perfect, one perfect one. And he came here to save us all. And he doesn't, a lot of people don't give him enough credit. But Jesus came here and died for all sin off the planet of this earth. He died for them all. All the ones in the future, all the ones in the past, that every sin that's ever been committed or ever would be committed, he died for them. The church don't teach you that. But he did. Every sin that you're going to do tomorrow, he's already paid for them. And all you got to do is accept his gift and what he did. It kind of makes you think about just import how important what he did and why he did it. Because he knew none of us was going to get in. None of us. None of us are perfect. We're all going to mess up. Then they always use that one line against you. Always. That. Well, that means you have a, you can sin whatever you do. You can do whatever you want. No. They don't give you no license to do anything. You love Jesus, but you're still going to fail. That's what we do. We're sinners. That's why when Jesus died on the cross, it was to clean on the inside and not the outside because the outside is corrupted. The inside is what's important. This stays here. What's inside goes up. So when you get, when you accept the gift of Jesus and what he did for you on the cross, in here is cleaned. It can't go dirty again. It's sealed. That's what the Bible says. The problem is today people don't teach that. They keep you in prison. The church keeps you in prison. They want you to be in prison and miserable. I was once that kind of Christian. When I first became a Christian, every time I messed up, I got more depressed and more depressed. I just couldn't understand why I could not do what I needed to do. I, I fought, I struggled and everything. And every time I messed up, I was scared to death. That's not the way it's supposed to be. See, when you accept the gift of Jesus, you're set free. When you truly know what he did, you're set free from all that. You understand that we're all sinners. And anybody says that they're not, that's a lie. And that makes them a sinner. We will all be sinners up until the day these old bodies are gone. That's what the devil don't want you to know. He wants to keep you in prison and miserable. And that's the way I was when I was an early Christian and didn't know better. But Jesus still stuck with me. We do our best. We try our best. But it never be good enough. 
That's why we need the blood of Jesus. I hope I've explained this and made it easy for you because a lot of people won't teach it to you. They'll let you be miserable and I don't want that to be with any case for you. We're not under the law. A lot of the church teaches that, that you can lose your salvation and every time you do a boo-boo, you're not going to make it. If that was the case, there is nobody on this earth that's ever going to make it because they're all sinners. They won't admit it. I can admit I'm a sinner. Most people can't, but I can. That's why I tell Jesus all the time I'm a sinner and I need him. That's why I accepted the gift of Jesus and what he did on that cross for me. I understand what he did. I don't put him back on the cross over and over again. I just don't. He only had to do it once for me. Our Father loves us more than anybody has ever loved us and more than your own family. If people would ever just come to the realization how much Jesus loves us, it would change their lives. It did me. Because nobody's ever loved me like he did. And he still does. He's still by my side each and every moment of the day. Would you like to have that? Call upon him today. It's that, that easy. He's waiting for you to just call out. That's it. Trust the gospel, people. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, and future. He died and was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have much longer here. And we need to get as many people in that boat as possible. Do the best job we can. And you guys have done that. We do our best. I've done my best. I hope that I've managed to let God work through me to help some of you. I hope I have. I'm not perfect, but I love Jesus. And I know he loves you all as much as he does me. And I just want to remind you of that each and every day that we're here, that we don't have much more time and the grace period is coming to an end. Trust in Jesus and the blood of Jesus and he'll come. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for another day, Father. Thank you for protecting the watchmen and watchwomen around the world on these all these networks as the world comes definitely to a darker place. We're seeing it happening right now before our very eyes. Protect them and their families in Jesus' name. As for you, Lord, watch over the homeless, the sick, and the hungry to help them until the rapture so we can get them home to where they will not have to deal with this stuff anymore in Jesus' name. As for you to watch over the innocents, Lord, around the world, the world is becoming a darker place by the minute. Keep them safe until we're out of here in Jesus' name it will be done. Lord, I pray for the people of Israel and all the Jews around the world. I ask you to protect them. Be with them. We know what's happening. We know it's Jacob's trouble. We see it coming. But be with them, Lord. We love the Jewish people. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Lord Jesus, thank you for just having us have this channel and protecting it. Thank you for protecting it from those who, even the ones who come against it, come against me, that we pray for them, Lord, and we love them. We do. I love them with everything I have. <sighs> lighten their hearts, Lord, before we leave here. Lord, I ask of you to watch over all the ones that put their names in the comments each and every day, these family members and friends of these people, that they are here every day religiously to make sure that you see them. And I know you do. It was your idea. And I know these people will be saved before it's too late. I have that kind of faith in you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Lord, thank you for just putting a roof over our head and food on the table. We know dark times are coming, and thank you for just letting us be awake. Right now, we'd all, there's so many that are lost and can't see two feet in front of them. And thank you for us not being those. And thank you for giving us the great teachers we have today and these great channels and these great watchmen and watchwomen that they come on each and every day to let us know that we're one day closer to being home. Bless them, Lord, for everything that they do for encouraging us in this dark world where it seems like we just want to leave right now and not have to see tomorrow. Lord Jesus, be with us until the rapture. We see these dark things coming. We see all these things. We know we're not going to be here much longer. We see that. But give us the strength and the courage to make it that far. In Jesus' name I pray. And amen. Thank each and every one of you for being here each and every day. 
God bless you all on this day. And may God bless the Jews and protect them from this attack that is coming. We just don't know when. Now we know the Jews will be fine. They make it through. I pray, Lord, is always with us up until the rapture because we're going to need it. Now, if April 8th comes and nothing happens, a lot of people's going to get discouraged. But we've told you, we think that's just the beginning of God showing the United States what's coming. Could it be the rapture? It could absolutely be. But if it does or does not, it doesn't mean we fall apart and we get mad and get aggravated. I know you want to go home. I do too. I don't want to be here. But we've got to fight. And God put us here. He placed you and me here at the the worst time in human history because he trusted us. Let's not let him down. Let's keep chugging until we're out of here. One family, all together. I love each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.